In life, we encounter people every day, all of whom have stories to share. We rarely take the time to ask people their personal stories, many of which will touch, move, and inspire us in some way. Matt has a passion for making authentic connections and learning about people from all walks of life. He has lived a life of giving back to the community and making a difference in people's lives. Are you ready to meet fascinating people and hear some inspiring stories? The Matt Hilton Show will introduce you to a world of possibilities you never knew existed. Sit back, be present, and enjoy. Here's your host, Matt Hilton. Hey everyone, Matt Hilton here, the host of The Matt Hilton Show. Thanks for tuning in today. Today's episode is part two of Kathy Fielder's story, and you don't want to miss it. Stay tuned for a word from our sponsor. With almost 20 years of real estate experience in the North Texas area, the professional realtors at Hilton Realty Advisors have helped over 500 clients with their housing needs. Hilton Realty Advisors covers all areas of real estate, buying, selling, building, investing, and renting. We deliver the keys to home ownership to all through integrity, love, and joy. Call us today for all of your real estate needs. So how did all of this start? Did you, was your dad an entrepreneur, your mom? Like, how, where did all of this begin, if you can think back and... Um, it actually, no, none, no one in my family. No one, okay. I grew up pretty humbly. I mean, no one was an entrepreneur. I don't come from a big background of, in any way. Mm -hmm. um, I just was always, it's just personally, I was driven. It's the only way I know how to put it. I was driven for more and always wanted to do more. And so- um, Where do you think that comes from, Kathy? Like, was there a, a, an event that happened in your life or was it just, because I come from a very, my dad was a mechanic and my mom was a stay-at-home mom right. and babysat. Like, I came from a low to middle income family, sure. right? Same. And no one was really, in, my grandfather on my mom's side, her dad was an entrepreneur yeah. and he owned a mechanic shop. But it's like, where did my drive come from? Like I, I always try to identify that and I haven't been able to, so. I haven't really been able, I've always been a dreamer. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I feel like it's from that and it's innate in me. And that's the only answer that I have. You know, I've always been a big dreamer. Um, I've always wanted to do more, be better personally, um, expand the world a little bit. And so I feel like it was just innate. Um, and then I cultivated it. Like I was saying, I read books or I did this or that. Yeah, you know, I it was just innate. Yeah. Um, and I wanted more. Yeah. I wanted it to be different. You know, I saw um, growing up, not that I, it wasn't fantastic, but I just wanted a different lifestyle for myself and for my family than I had when I was growing up. Yeah. And, you know, there are those of us that go, okay, cool, I'm going to go out and get that done. And then some people don't, they, they don't, and it's not in their wheelhouse and that's okay, right? Um, but it was definitely mine. <laughs> <laughs> and there's nothing to be ashamed of. It's no, just, it is what I'm it proud is. of it. Yeah, I've yeah, worked really hard. Sure. And, and so, you know, I I'm, I'm, have no desire to hide that. Yeah. And I appreciate that. Thank you. What has been your most vulnerable um, time period? Was it in 2009 when you lost the seven figures in nine months or? No, it's definitely been the past year. I actually got divorced over the past year. Okay. And that has been, um, it, it's, it's a real rupture in your life. And um, it's a lot to work through. I'm um, separating out two lives, right? And trying to manage children together and trying to like do it well. Um, that is, it's been the most painful and most vulnerable time of my life ever, for sure. Um, so that's been something that um, I've been working through and it's getting, I mean, it's getting so much better and so, uh, you know, but it's, it's been the most painful thing I've ever gone through for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. um, I see that, uh, for your show and tell segment that you brought a little something. It looks I like did. it has some kids on I, it or something. Oh. So this is a segment of the show where um, the guest brings a, an item that brings them joy, whether it's from home or work. And uh, so I asked Kathy to bring something to share today. So tell us a little bit about what you brought and the significance of it. Well, family is definitely the most important thing in the world to me. Aren't they so cute? They so are. this is Isabella and this is Harrison and he was born right before the holidays in 2011. Okay. And so it's just something that sits on my vanity that I see and just to remember like the privilege it is to be their mom mm -hmm. is a big thing for me. So I, I, I look at it as a blessing and such a privilege to be able to lead and mentor your kids and the gifts that come back to you from being a mom are really important. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Don't mean to get you upset, <laughs> um, upset. I but, just... but I, I understand or emotional, I guess, but it's, um, and it's interesting cause that's a photo from 2011 
Right. And I have a similar photo of my children from when they were younger too. Right. That sits, you know, on my bathroom counter. And so that it reminds me of, I guess the sweetness of that. No, <laughs> no, no but, but for sure. But being a parent. Being right? a parent. And yeah. I think, you know, after having gone through the divorce and um, wanting to protect and take care of my kids as much as I have and my ex too, right? Yeah. And figuring that out, it's just become more important to me, the kind of value that, you know, they bring to your life and how, how special it is. Yeah. 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 Wow. So you have definitely changed the trajectory of your children's futures. I, I would assume by what you have created, um, in your businesses, right? Um, you know, I hope so. Yeah. Um, I, I want them to be successful thinkers who are driven. I want them to be happy. Um, I want them to be kind. I want them to be thoughtful. Um, and I do, I feel like I, I you know, my daughter is an internationally ranked equestrian. So, um, she gets that from her mom. <laughs> I do ride, but no, I'm no, she, she's much better than me. Mm -hmm. Um, but, um, yeah, you know, and so I feel like you, you give them a skill set in order to become a successful human. Our job is if they came out perfect, we wouldn't be necessary, right? That's mm -hmm. rule number one. Right. Secondly, our job is to raise them to be amazing humans um, and to be happy humans. And so um, I do feel like just kind of some of the principles of success that I personally hold dear, um, they, they're rubbing off. I mean, yeah, that's my job as a mom is to help that to happen. Yeah. Right. As a parent, not just a mom. Yeah, for sure. Um, but I do take the mom role incredibly seriously. I think it's an honor to be one. And so um, I hope that they see me every day working and working hard and understand that they have a mom who really wants to, you know, show them what being a success in life is all about. And it's not what success that you see on Instagram or TikTok. Yeah. yeah. So. Going through what you have gone through over the past year, um, have you gotten through it alone? No, goodness gracious, no. Um, I have dear friends, girlfriends, just friends in general, um, who have been absolutely wonderful in helping me to kind of work through it and willing to listen, right? Mm -hmm. um, you seek therapy, for mm -hmm. sure. You go sit on a couch and try to figure out how to work through it. You know, I've tried to be pretty real and honest as much as you can. I mean, it is, it's a very vulnerable place. You feel very mm -hmm. much like a failure. You know, yeah. and you feel like, hey, I could have done this better, or what could I have done differently, or how can I, you know, can I fix it? All these things that you kind of have to work through. Um, but uh, you know, and, and being honest and open with my kids is, is you know, it's it's what what's within their you know ability to hear or whatever, and mm -hmm. kind of just saying, hey, this is hard, and I'm not perfect, but guess what? You don't really need to be perfect either. I think it's that's a, that's a great lesson. That's that a you huge can learn. lesson for our kids, for sure. Yeah, because the world thinks <clears throat> that everybody needs to be perfect. Mm -hmm. And especially on social media and we'll get to you what you're doing now like yeah everything that comes up on their feed it looks like everybody's so happy and successful and doing great and absolutely we both know that that's not true no and I, people always you know often they'll be like you take you don't take any bad pictures i'm like i do mm. i take lots of them <laughs> i just don't necessarily post them all the time right, right? Yeah. um and so you know it, it is really pretty and, and it, it's it's designed to be pretty and inspiring um i think what i've learned a lot over the past year is that um maybe pretty can't, doesn't have to be so beautiful. Mm. You know what I mean? Real mm -hmm. is really pretty. Um, and so, you know, now I'm sitting here starting to talk out loud about going through the divorce and, you know, figuring out what that space looks like. So, yeah. you know, and there's a lot of things in, the, in that scenario where you don't feel great about yourself. You just mm -hmm. don't. Mm -hmm. And you feel a little ashamed and you feel like you could have done better or what could I have done more. But then at the end of the day, working through that maybe a little bit out loud is really good for other people to hear because, you know, we're all just doing the best we can. We're all trying to figure it out. That is so true. Um, and in so many ways, because I see so many people wearing masks, right? right? Because right. they're afraid, afraid of opening up. They're yeah. afraid of what other people might think and the judgment and things of that nature, right? So it could be anywhere from depression or eating disorder or Absolutely. going through a divorce or, you know, sexuality, whatever it may be, right? Sure. They're just like, they hide that. and. And that is really painful for people when they aren't able to talk about what they're going through. Absolutely. And it's, uh, it's not necessary. I think that's one of the biggest things that, you know, we really mm -hmm. need to have a conversation about is it's not necessary to go through that. Don't, you don't have to be ashamed. It's okay to be who you are, admit it, move forward, figure out, you know, how can I get through this? And it does, it takes people, you need to be surrounded by people who yeah. can really help you and support you. 
Um, but not everybody's like that, right? Mm -hmm. And so you, I mean, that's hard. It's really hard. And so again, I just think that talking about it out loud, hoping that people are hearing it's okay. Yeah. You're, everybody's struggling with something. Everybody's struggling with something. Mm -hmm. Some may be a little, you know, more like life defined. I mean, all of these things, but we're all trying to figure it out. And yeah. so being, being kind, again, I keep going back to that, but it's true. Mm -hmm. like, kindness really does make an impact on people's lives and it does help. And yeah. it, it's, it's actually better for you too, oh, <laughs> like, it right? It definitely is. So. That, and being a philanthropist, you know that you give and do for others, right? right? Because it helps them. It and does. It does something for you too, for but sure. it's about the, the, the people that you're, Absolutely. you're giving your time and money and energy to. Absolutely. Yeah, for sure. So, um, we're going to wrap up with three questions that I ask all my guests okay. because I love inspiring imagination and dreaming amongst people from all walks of life. Mm -hmm. And, uh, so the first one is a person you want to meet who's still living. Oh goodness. I haven't thought about this kind of thing in quite a while. Who would I love to meet? Okay. Can you ask me the second yep, one? Yep, okay. I'll give you all three and that way you can kind of think. Perfect, so okay. person you want to meet that's still living. Second one is a place you want to go that you haven't been. Okay. And the, uh, I saw your eyes light up there. And then an experience you want to have. Um, I think a safari might be an experience that I okay. want to have. There um, you go. I think uh, Lake Como in Italy is where I want to go and I haven't been. Okay. That or like Southern Italy mm -hmm. down in like, you know, or Nice or something like that. Right. Um, someone I would like to meet. That's really hard because there are so many people that have great stories. Um, who would I love to meet? I think that Oprah would be incredible to meet. Mm -hmm. I find her, um, she's such a big dreamer. Did you know that she got fired for, from her first newscasting job? That's what I've Because heard. She, she cried mm -hmm. on the newscast and she kept crying. And every time, because she has such this big heart, right? Um, and so I, I find her very interesting in what she's built. Yeah. I mean, the network and, and just the businesses that she's built, I find that incredibly intriguing. I think yeah. that you could learn a lot from her. Um, I, so, but I would really have to think about that. I like, I mean, I know, I know there's like 50. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and that's the first one that comes to mind and, yeah. and that's great. So my audience may know of a way to make one of those things happen. Fun. And so that's, uh, that's what I love to do is it's about connections. It's about networking. It's about who, you know, and, and, um, and making those things happen. Absolutely. So, for sure. So Kathy, thank you so much for oh, being here. So thank you thank for you. opening up and, and, uh, talking about the good and the bad and, mm -hmm. um, and the good that's going to come from what you've been through. And, um, you are such an inspiration to so many people and just want to thank you and encourage you to continue doing what you're doing. Thank you. Thank yes, you for having me. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. <laughs> All right, y'all that wraps it up for today. Uh, stay tuned next week as we have another fascinating person with an inspiring story. Take care. If you'd like to contact Matt or know a fascinating person with an inspiring story that would make a great guest, reach out to the show at thematthiltonshow at gmail.com.